everybody. Welcome back. I'm so excited because I have my friend Melanie Kenneman here. And Melanie is a driver of results and winning with and through people. She is a Team Leader Hall of Fame recipient at Keller Williams, a KWU Master Faculty, a Leverage Series Instructor, a coach, a consultant to top talent, and believes that energy matters. She's been an executive team leader for 17 years, was an operating partner in an Austin Market Center as well. And she has now started a new transformation in her career, which we'll talk about, but she stepped out to coach and teach more full-time across the country. And I'm just so excited to have her here because this person is such an inspiration to me. I call her a friend and she has helped probably over 1,500 agents make the move to Keller Williams and help them grow their business. And it's through none other than her amazing mindset and determination. And so I'm going to let her pick up and share with you a little bit more about her story, but mostly because I can't wait to just say hi, Mel, and welcome to Monday Morning Mojo. Hey, and uh, the day we're recording this, it's officially your birthday. So can we just give you like birthday shout out? I get to record on my friend's birthday when we're actually recording this. So happy birthday, beautiful lady to you. I'm happy Thank to be you so here. Much. Yeah, this is my birthday. It's such a great way to spend time uh, on my birthday with you. So thank you for being on the show. I'm honored to be your guest and I'm big about birthdays because I think birthday is a day of renewal for people. I love birthdays more than New Year's. And so this is your day of renewal. But taking that day to think about what are all the amazing achievements I've achieved this year? How did I grow? What did I learn? What were my lessons? And then looking forward to turning that page in the book to the next chapter. So exciting. Like yeah, th This is why we're friends because we think a lot. Of, and actually, by the time this airs, um, another episode about celebrating birthdays, I wrote a letter to myself that I shared with um, our audience and it's funny, right? So many people get all hung up about their birthday and get hung up about age. But I agree, it's really an opportunity to just look and celebrate where you've been and where you've gone and where you're still going. So I don't get hung up on that because yesterday I was 52, today I'm 53, but really what does that mean? <laughs> I know, exactly. That is so true. And, and people do get hung up on that. Here's the thing is all of life's an inside out job. And I know 25 year olds that act older than me when yeah. I'm, we're about the same age. And so it, it's so funny to me. It's just a number. And I see it's you, just a number. You know, it's just a number. And if somebody makes that a thing, then it becomes a thing for them. Absolutely. All right, celebrate. I just want to jump in. I shared a little bit about you in that intro. And there are people who listen to the podcast who are not in Keller Williams. They might be entrepreneurial. But in our world, we have spent our career at Keller Williams really developing people and acquiring talent and helping them achieve their goals. And collectively, that allows for the companies that we are a part of to grow. What do you love most about being a catalyst and, a, and an integral part of someone's growth? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. <laughs> Well, we'll do that two-part series. It's all good. Okay, we might need a two-parter. What do I love about being the catalyst for people's growth? I love everything about that. I think the most rewarding thing that I could say if I were to look back on the last 17 years of my life, and real estate's not my first career. I've always been in leadership my whole life since high school, honestly. My goal has always been to change other people's lives because I find that incredibly re rewarding. And I talk about when I travel around the country, uh, when I teach my career visioning class, which is a class about attracting talent, for those of you that are not with Keller Williams, it's a kind of an empire building class. And I heard that quote that says, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, you go with other people. And I can go really fast by myself. And I think a lot of us achievers that hear that can relate to that. But when I want to go far, I go with other people. And so being the catalyst for other people is like that next level of moving from success to significance, right? If I yeah. lead you, when we are in relationship with each other and your life is better because of that, hopefully mine's gonna be too because it's reciprocated, energy's reciprocated. We're gonna both walk away better people. And that's in business, that's in life. And so I just made this decision very early on. I think I was about 12, man. I was like 12 years old. I had a kind of near-death experience and I made it. And I said at 12 years old, I was going to make my life matter. 
And I've just been on this mission and purpose to be a catalyst for people's greatness. So you see in my email signature, here's to your greatness, right? I see the greatness in people before they can see it in themselves. And sometimes that's all they needed was for me to see it and for me to believe that in them. Yeah. But then uh, they, they rarely fail me. Some fail me. <laughs> Not going to lie. Some fail me. Because we can't want it for them yeah. more than they want it for themselves, right? 100%. So it's everything to me being the catalyst because then I feel like I'm living my life's purpose is when people say, because of you, my life has changed. And I always tell people, well, I love that you give me so much credit. I open a lot of doors for a lot of people, but you went through them. You walked through them. You did the work. You made that decision. I just role modeled what was possible. Yeah. So when you live in that world of possibility, I think as a catalyst for people, it's the most rewarding thing in my journey that I can do. And so that's why I love working in this space. Yeah, for sure. So Mel and I, we've been in the same role in two different markets, you being based mostly in Texas, not exclusively though. You started in another market before that, right? Yeah, I was in Nevada, West Coast. I was in Reno, Nevada market, like 2006 to 2010. Yeah. And really leading offices, acquiring talent for the company, coaching, consulting, and uh, you did it for 17 years. I have been doing it for 12 years. And the joke is we are some of the more senior members of that group because there's transition and people move on. What do you think kept you there for 17 years? And as I said in the intro, you're now moving in some new directions, which is really exciting. So I guess it's a two-part question. What kept you there as long as it did? And why was now the right time to start a new chapter? Well, that's a great question. Honestly, when I joined as a new agent, this company, I knew I wanted to do this role because my role that I had done before I got into real estate was leading movie sets. So again, like I've always been in a leadership role. So I knew the moment I joined Keller Williams, that's me. And so 10 months later, I was. But at the time, I thought, now yeah, I'll do it two years, stretch maybe five. But that's it. And then I'm moving on because I'm highly entrepreneurial. So the fact that I did stay in that role for 17 years when the average person in our industry lasts under two years, right? It's 18 months to two years is the average lifespan of a team leader in that role. Yeah. I think it's because, first of all, I did three and a half years in my first city, took us to number one, and then was recruited to Austin, right? To the flagship. And then I love that challenge and grew that from 500 to 900. So I always had these challenges. And then they threw the OP thing at me for the North. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll be OP and team leader. So I always had changes happening. I always had the next level of whatever challenge. And I just never felt like my work was done. And are you someone who says yes a lot? Do you find that when challenges show up, you often just say yes? Or was it no. something that, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it lined yeah. up with something that was probably a part of your core values. 100%, 100%. So yeah, that's a great point because I had a lot of opportunity to go do this, go do that all the time. And I was like, no, I knew that I was to stay on this path. And then when COVID happened, Gary Keller asked me to go to the North, which is now my third market center that I've relaunched. And because I've been the OP, but there's something different when you're in the team leader position, you're in the trenches with them. And so of course I did that. I think I stayed so long because of the people and my loyalty to the people and because there was so much happening in the world, they needed leadership. Oh, yes. Leadership. That's a whole episode right there. I talk a lot about leadership because obviously I live it and have spent my entire career. Like you, so many similarities. I, I just did a podcast not too long ago about whether leaders were born or created. And I think it can happen for some of us either way. But for me, I always you know, found that I was really drawn to wanting to help people and lead people. And the world just needs leadership. And I think that leaders need leaders too. It's not to say that we're immune from that too. So I can totally respect that you felt like you needed to be there to guide and help them navigate. I could not leave them right now. And I, and it's so, that was the hardest part about stepping away. And I, I saw this quote the other day, it was so great. And it says, a leader is not the one who carries the title. It's the one who carries the hearts of the people. And yeah. I said, wow, isn't that the truth? Because even though I don't have the team leader title next to my name anymore, I still have those relationships and the impact that I made with every single person I got to do the work with. And I was honored to get the industry award for Austin, all of Austin this year in May. And, and on that evening- That was so incredible. 
so exciting. The night before I was heading for my big Europe adventure, it was like, couldn't have been better. It was so amazing. But I'll tell you what was really impactful that night is three different agents from different companies, three different agents from different companies grabbed me and teared up and said, I cannot tell you the impact you have made on my life. So People are at mine. And that's why, so I talk a lot about Lighthouse and I don't know if you've heard me talk about this, but there was an agent once that came in my office when I was at the South location and she had just been going through some stuff and and like most people in life, because that's how life is. We go through stuff. But she brought me this little wooden box and it had this beautiful etched lighthouse on the top and it had a poem with it. And I, I these are not the exact words of the poem, but the poem says something like, a lighthouse doesn't run around the island looking for boats to save. It stands tall and brightly and shines the way and lights the way for people to find their way safely to shore. <laughs> and that's why, isn't that beautiful? I just love yes. that. And I believe our agents are that to their clients. I believe that any leadership role is that people are watching you. Our children are that people anywhere you are. It's not a title. We're all leaders in some way. And But because of COVID and because of that, I moved the location. I moved us physically and saved the financials. We went from a rent of 54000 to twenty five, or we'd be you know almost out of business because people yeah. stopped coming in. They didn't want to rent space, all the things. I couldn't step away because the time was not right for me to step away. And then a new ownership took over and bought the market centers that I'm part of, and they brought in a different leader. And I was like, huh, okay, there's another leader. Wait, I can breathe, wait. It, it actually gave me permission to be like, what does Melanie want next? My children no. has been raised through the team. So that way it really became for me, there were some changes and those changes actually became my greatest opportunity for me to look back at myself and say, all right, girl, high five to yourself. Your people are good. There's another leadership group in here that's ready to go. I think you're free to go. Like I gave myself permission to go. Yeah. I needed that kind of. What I love about what you said, a couple of things. First of all, you talked about the commitment and I'll say obligation, but not in a way that feels oppressive, but the commitment that we have to make as leaders to the people we lead. And you talked about significance and I'm sure you were getting a lot of personal fulfillment more than just the gratification we expressed, but you, you really felt committed to the group and, and timing was important. Yeah. When the time changed, when things shifted and you saw that opportunity, then you were able to say, okay, what do I want now? And really continuing to be a leader just on a different platform. So right. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Because again, a lot of people who listen to Monday Morning Mojo, I think listen every week to find that piece of inspiration or that shift in mindset. It started as a way to just get your head on right for the week on a Monday morning. And I think it's really continued to develop into a mind. This is about mindset. So what was going on in, in your mind at that time that's, that made you feel like, okay, it is the right moment. And what do I want to define for myself? That's a great question. Our whole life is connected, right? Yes. Our personal life, our business, everything's connected. And three years ago, exactly, I had the courage to leave a 25-year marriage that I should have left 10 years ago. And that was the beginning of Melanie 2.0. Because in that moment, I love that Melanie 2.0. Yeah, that's what we all call it. We're all calling this Melanie 2.0 because, yeah. because one agent came up to me. She said, some stupid person just said you retired. And I said, do you know her? This is not retirement. This is no. Melanie 2.0. And you have a podcast called The Second Half, right? I do. So I exactly. love that, right? Yeah. yeah. But it was actually having that divorce finalized. It just finalized this last December after a very messy war to get to that. I got my freedom back. And so that allowed me the space. I fixed that. And it takes a long time to get through that. And I did a lot of work around that. And I'm so happy about that. I'm like, everybody's like, you're so happy. I said, I am. Because I'm, I'm going to say congratulations. And that please do. Please yeah. do. This is something literally that I had promised myself I would do 10 years ago, but raising kids and all the things. And so finally, when our youngest was graduating high school, I'm like, it's, the t it's time because I started looking ahead 
And what does that look like? What does that look like? Because the man I was married to is a great human. He's the father of my children and he'll, I'd always be there for him when he needed me. But we were used to being apart. He's German. We met on a movie set. I was in film before real estate. And so we had really lived our marriage, a lot of our marriage apart. So he'd be gone three, four months at a time on movies. So I was the one that raised the all the things, right? So when I looked up and said, I don't really need him, like for financial, I don't really need him emotionally because we don't have that anyway. Why am I married to this person? And it just became another up. What am I holding on to? What am I holding on to? And and just because I was a little girl who said, I'm never getting divorced because I grew up with divorced parents. And I said, okay, now that's just ego. Melanie's heart and soul screamed joy on that day of a divorce because I was fighting for myself. So when I did that, and it's again, not an ugly thing. It's just, I want to feel alive. I want to, even if I'm single or dating, I want to be with people that I enjoy being with. Yeah, I really like my company and I have great friends and I have amazing people around me. So the idea of staying in something I don't like, is just not an option anymore. And I think the older we get, the less we tolerate that. You're getting closer to that, that dash. How much time do I have less than who do I spend it with? Guess what? It's not this marriage and he deserved a lot of that. So there's no, don't feel sorry for the guy. He's a great, it's a okay. great No, and you know what? You also have given him an opportunity to find his own path now. 100%. Now, he's if he's going to hold on to something tight, I can't pick anything up with this That's hand right. if I'm still holding on to yeah. that. So he deserves I totally love. Everybody that. deserves love. He's just not, it's not happening here. <laughs> So anyway, but when I had that quieted, when that noise was quieted from my personal life, yeah, it opened up, okay, now I can deal with work because my career, me and you, we've been these career driven totally. women and yeah. that became so much of my life where I was like, Ooh, I just emptied off that weight off of me. Now let's take a look at that. And then this new leader had come to town. I'm like, okay, so there's a new vision, new leader. Okay, it feels like I can loosen up here. And then I started saying yes to teaching all across the country, which I never made time for. I said, I'm going to make time for that because let me see if I like that. And what I realized, because I'm all about impact, just like you are, is when I went to Seattle, when I went to New York, when I went to the Carolinas, all these places around the country, and I taught the class that I'm really passionate about, the impact was actually more powerful. Sure. The people I didn't even know because I could be free with my stories and all the things. And I'm like, okay, Melanie, it's time. Like life was calling me and I wanted more freedom. I wanted to be able to travel. My no, nobody, but my children live here in Austin. And so it, I just made that decision. Like the time is right. So I think sometimes to find that decision for yourself, you can't make all the decisions and all the feels at one time. For me, it had to be that way. I had to get my home right. To really get my head on. And I'm glad I didn't do both at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. I needed to get peace in the personal life, get myself together, take care of myself, and then really look at it so I'm not making some emotional decision. And then so that's when I knew I'm ready. And then now I'm excited. I'm excited when I wake up every day. What do I want to build? What do I want to do? Oh my gosh, everything's a choice. Yes, it is. Everything is a choice. Yeah. And we can choose to feel any way we want about it. And that creates our reality. And what I got thinking about as you were sharing that is, and sometimes I don't know if we talk about this enough, this can sometimes be the downside of leadership is that we pour so much into everyone else. And because we're, we're great leaders, maybe because of the way we're wired. So we naturally do that with the people we love, with our family, that we often put ourselves at the end of the list. And so you've given yourself an opportunity now to say, what does Melanie want? And whatever it is, it's not selfish because you're still contributing on such a high yeah. level. Yeah. Like I said, the leader is a title, right? And so yeah. the, 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 I, I walk in a room, wherever I'm in, something happens, I'm stepping in. Like it, it, my kids laugh about the mom. You're not like, you're not responsible for the world. I'm like, it's just my DNA. I'm going to help somebody if they need it. It's just who I am. Otherwise, I'm not being authentic to who I am. So to answer the question about what am I doing, I am coaching leaders and I'm training. And I some other things down the line, like I want to write a book. I'm going to put women's retreats together. I'm doing more of my music. Like it doesn't have to just be one thing because I was locked into one thing, girl. And I think I, you get can, it. <laughs> I think you can relate. So I'm allowing myself to have the grace to just 
evolve into, I know that what I'm doing right now is just the step to what I'm doing next, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes a lot of sense. And I'll just put it out there for everyone to hold us accountable. On my uh, you know, list is also, I have the outline for three different books right now that I would like to be able to bring to life. And maybe we'll collaborate on some women's retreats. I love that. We'll I love that, that. Another, I love another that. time. But I think a lot of people who are listening could probably agree that you are a high achiever. And like a lot of high achievers, you have big vision. How do you help create that with other people? That when you're working with someone in a coaching capacity, or maybe even from a stage training and... Some people don't have that natural ability to see it. How do you help people create vision? Because I think that's such a big part of achieving goals. You have to see it first. And I believe that's how you're, I know you, so I know that you're wired that way. How do you help other people create that vision? That's such a great question. I think to be able to help someone create their vision that you have to find their purpose Mm -hmm. and what they're passionate about. Because I've worked with a lot of agents the last few years in my last office, I would have a, I had a little couch, what I have here. And when agents would come in, they're like, should I lay down or sit down? I said, you get a cheers. What kind of dare? Right, right. What do you need today? What do you need? Because I can be any of those things, right? Because you do feel like in leadership, sometimes you're just a safe space for people to come and vent, right? As long as you're not feeding into their victimhood. So they just, they, sometimes they just need a safe place. So what I was finding was a lot of people's like, I'm having lack of vision. I'm having lack of vision. I can't see it. I don't know. I don't know what I really want. And I'm like, okay, let's boil it down. Great. How much time do you have? I have an hour right now. Do you have time? Great. No, then let's reschedule it. But it's literally where you say, I like to ask people, what are your five passion words? Like the five words that excite you. Love that. That really just, oh, I love that. Who are you? What are those words? If you had five words that describe you at your highest and best version of yourself, what are those words? Integrity. Great. Okay. Awesome. We'll come back to that. What's another one? Passion. Awesome. Growth. What else? contribution, and then whatever, world domination. Okay, awesome. Now let's go through each one and explain what that means to me. Explain this to me. What does that mean to you when you say contribution? What does it mean to, right? And you're writing it down. And then I go through, now we're going to put them in an order of one to five. One is the most important that just, man, that word is me. I just vibrate when I hear that word. That is my word. And then from one to five, and okay, this one, I'm between these two, but let's talk about that. And then it's definitely adventure. This is what I'm thinking about. She, her word was adventure. And adventure, great. And then one, two, three, four, five. We knew her word was adventure. This is a real example. And I said, great. Now let's go back to the future self that we're going to do next, which is the motivational future that we do in career visioning, which is the class that I teach around the country. Which That's is one of my favorite training. classes. I would teach it to you. That's great. It's incredible. It's incredible. And so really what you're saying in this conversation is five years from now, take the ceiling off, lid off what's happening in your world, in your job career and in your financial. And then there's four quadrants. The last two, you let them pick. You better be sure adventure, that passion word is one of them. And maybe the second word is another or family, whatever that you let them choose those bottom two. And so I did this with her and all of a sudden her whole Everything about her future came became, like was built around more adventure in her life because it'd been work kids like so many of us. You hardly talk to the husband and this and that. And it's more adventure. How do I get more adventure in my life? And just by her deciding that her eyes lit up, she was able to see the vision because now I want to do this because I actually want that lake house so that we can have the kids. That was her vision. So now you're going to set it. What are the numbers now? Let's break the numbers. Let's put the numbers. How many calls you got to make? How many listings you got to sell? Now the me. numbers mean something else, right? Because exactly. now the numbers become the vehicle to have what you want. And even though somewhere we know that intellectually, you have to connect the emotion to it. And you had to give her that vision. And that's powerful. And I hope that for people listening, they can put, play this again, everybody, because you should work on this if you can. And I just want to also pull apart something else that you you talked about. So Keller Williams is a company built on systems and models. We have a system for everything and a model to follow that will help you be successful. And of course, when it comes to hiring and attracting talent, it's serious business for us because it's not only about finding the right people for our organization, but we also want to make sure that we can support the individual and help them create this life by design and a business worth owning and where they can thrive. So 
I can't tell you how many times over the years when I get into that part of the process where I want to know what is the vision that you have for yourself? What motivates you? What are the things you want to have and create? And if you could have and create that because you're a part of my world, how exciting would that be? It just blows people away because I think in most interviews, it's about what are you going to do for the company? And it's really got to be, no matter what organization you operate or industry you're in, if you can create the win, if you can create where this is truly, because one of the words that gets me excited is collaboration Mm. and and being able to come from contribution. And so those are two really important words for me, part of my value system. And everything that you're talking about is helping people live within their value system. And we as leaders have to know what that value system is. Because if you're out of your values, if you're out of integrity on your values, you're in stress. Yeah. And then we can't serve you. So so that's why this is so important, I think, as leaders to really dig into that. And to know that about your people, because I love that you said that in most interviews, when you're interviewing, it's like, what can you, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? But if I know where that person wants to go and you took the time to, to ask that even because people are like, wow, I can't believe you spent so much time with me. Now, if this position is the next natural step to get me there, because guess what? It costs a lot of time and energy to train people too. I'll work oh, yeah. long-term in business with people, right? And so I think it's just so powerful. And I think career visioning and that whole leverage series is like the secret sauce of Keller Williams. It's it. Anybody from any company should go to one of those classes because you can take so many of those models and systems and bring them into your world. Because again, it's definitely the who. And if you want to go far, you, you need other people to go with you. Yes, definitely. And the future self exercise, basically the motivational interview is really a future self exercise where, why don't you explain it to people? Because again, I would love to inspire someone listening to either implement this in their world, because I sometimes go back and do the motivational interview with my own staff. All the time. Because things change over the years. And I want to know, how do we continue to create an environment that you're thriving in? So explain what we mean by this motivational interview, because I, I think that would be fun for people to learn. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I was just talking about with the four quadrants. So the five words, I just threw that in, right? That's to help people get thinking to tie it in. But when you do the motivational future, you literally, you want to draw it out. This is not something you want to do for yourself. You want to do it with somebody. That's the key to that. You do it for them. They do it for you. And there's a real power in that. In somebody creating this space, half of the power, I want to say maybe 60 to 70% of that power is how well you do this for somebody. I agree, yes. When you are really engaged, I always do it in front of the room when I'm teaching and it's always just a tearjerker and and that person walks out so empowered, but you literally, you take a a, a piece of white, big piece of white paper, draw a line. So it's four sections, four quadrants, if you're just listening to this. And you have the top two quadrants and the bottom two quadrants. And the top two quadrants is always, the first one is job and career. The second quadrant at the top right would be financial. And then the bottom two, you allow that person to choose what's really important to you that you really want to focus on and monitor over the next five years that would make a big impact on your life. And so for the example I just had now, you said adventure, right? And you want more adventure. So do you think we should make one of those? Yeah, definitely adventure. And then let's do family or whatever, right? Okay, great. And then, so then you go back and you always start with the, the money, the job career, because that gets their juices flowing. In five years from now, when life's amazing, what is happening in your world, in your job career? What are you doing? Take Do you most people struggle? Like they don't even know what to think at first because I've found yeah. that so many times. Yeah. Okay. So what, and I don't know. Okay. So what would it be if you did know? Yeah. No, there's no judgment. This is your future. You get to design it. So if you don't design it, somebody else will. So let's, I think I've, oh, I've that's a good one. Say that again. <laughs> I said, if you don't design it, somebody else will. And I'd rather that you and I design that today. So in a perfect case scenario, I don't even care if it's real estate. In five years from now, if you're really successful, what job are you doing? And you might, it might be multiple things. I'm coaching agents. Great. What else? And I would say, what else? I don't even go there. I have a book tour that I'm doing. Great. What else? I have a real estate team. Awesome. What else? I have a business, a cleaning business. Okay. Awesome. Anything else? And you just let them go because you're creating the space. And then you go back to each one and you say, great. What is important about being a coach? What does that look like? Who are you coaching? How many people are you coaching? No money here. 
It's just, what are you doing? Yeah. And, and the what, significance of it and, and why it's what important, about to that's important to you. And then, so you finish that quadrant, then you go to the next one, you do the same thing with money and then the bottom two. And then you look at that, they end and people are like, I didn't even think that this was possible, but now I'm looking at this. I think I can do all that. And if you just put a key and unlocked a possibility in somebody that they didn't even know that they had when they started this conversation with you. It's such a powerful, if you, but you have to allow the space for them to sit in it. Yeah. What if you did know? What if you did and, know? And we have to be comfortable with the silence. That's something you have to learn as a coach, exactly. or consultant. You just got to give people time to think. Cause I think the average person, that's the challenge. It's not that they don't know. We all know. Yeah. We all have the answers. We just don't give ourselves enough time to really figure it out. It's so true. And it's funny. The next two days, I'm going to be in coaches skills camp for a refresher since I'm now officially a coach with Keller Williams too. And I remember when I first went, when I first moved to Austin and we did a mini version of this and I did it with my business partner at the time. And on there, I never told anybody, but on that future stuff, I said, okay, uh, I want to have a TV show about re recruiting or something like that. And she's okay, what else? And I, but I just came up. So the next week, I got a call from Keller Rooms International and they said, Melanie, we want to beta test this recruiting show that we want to do called Recruiting Rockstars. We want you to be the host with Rich Rector. What do you think about it? And I said, I'm game. And we piloted it and everything was so much fun. But I walked into my business partner's office, only she knew that. And right. I said, did you tell anybody about this? I've never said this out loud to anybody. She said, what are you talking about? I said, we did the future self thing. And I said about the TV show, did you say anything to anybody? She said, no. I said, Keller Williams just called me and asked me about the TV show. Isn't that fun? But that's yeah. the power of it. It is. That's, I think, one of the things that I love is that it's an exercise in manifestation. And if you can start to conceptualize it, which is why I wanted to ask you about vision and how to help people with vision it's such a powerful tool because now we can actually manifest it and reverse engineer from there and just figure out, okay, so if I see it, I can have it. If it's a desire I'm meant to have, it is what I believe. Now I just have to figure out how to get there. Exactly. If we want to talk about manifestation, sister, how about this? Yeah. Think about the bold letter. Okay. So for those oh, that are yeah. we have this now six week course and it's called bold. It's amazing. It's called, it stands for business objective life by design. And in that course, you're challenged with your limiting beliefs. And it's a wonderful program. Highly recommend. At the end of that course, you write yourself a letter and you date it. So whatever day you're listening to this podcast, they, go pull out a piece of paper. It's a journal prompt, right? It's, it's a journal good. prompt. Put today's date, but with next year's year, right? So as we're recording this, we're in 2024. So I would put today's date in 2025. And then I write a letter to myself, Melanie, oh my gosh, this year has been so incredible. And I'm going to write all the things that I accomplished. Even if I don't know, I'm going to do it. I did this. I spoke all over the world. I started writing my book. I'm coaching great clients. I met this amazing man in my life, like all the things, whatever. I'm just putting it out there. I have an amazing arrest with my kids. And we took this trip to Europe. I'm just putting stuff out there. Okay. And then you put it away and you look at it a year later. So now with Keller Williams, they keep that letter and then they yeah. mail it to you a year later. So I was recruited to Austin, Texas. So I moved to Austin, Texas for the flagship office, right? Money was tight. The bonuses were not kicking in. I was struggling. And I was like five months in and I was literally thinking I made a mistake moving to Austin. Yeah. Uh, it's were miserable. It was hot here. I'd moved away from all my support system. Remember my ex-husband was gone all the time. So it was just a very stressful time. And I had not really thought through because I'm like, of course, it's going to be successful. I'm going. It's what I do. I know how to play to win. It's who I am. So I was at a real low point and I had got a call from Dee Schultz, who is our number one agent. And she's screaming on the phone. You won. And I said, what are you talking about? She's oh, like, I don't know the story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you won. You won the Mercedes and the trip to Germany. And I said, if you're messing with me, you're so much trouble. She said, no, you won. And I said, are you serious? And she said, yeah. And at the time, my, my husband at the time was shooting in Morocco. I'm like, Klaus, I just won a car. Can you believe it? He's Mary, it's a scam. I'm like, no, it's real. The next week, I got my bold letter that I'd written in the town I was in before because we had had bold there. And the letter said, get a new sports car and take the kids back to Germany. Crazy. My kids were born there and I hadn't been back in six years. So the next summer, flew to Stuttgart, picked up my car that I'd ordered, 
drove away. They saw their grandparents and it was like, you won that car. I thought, I know it's crazy, right? I totally manifested that. <laughs> That's amazing. I, but it changed me. It yeah, that changed story. my thought process of what's possible. And because part of what we're talking about now that we've opened up this conversation around vision and manifestation is belief. So you can't just throw a bunch of stuff out in the atmosphere. Oh, it would be nice if. It, it has to have meaning. It has to have significance. But you have to have some level of belief. So even on a subconscious level, you have to know that you can have it, that it's yours to have if you're thinking about it. So clearly you knew that it was yours to have. Yeah. And that you're worthy of it. Right. And yeah, that's a whole that, Yeah. That's an whole other episode. <laughs> exactly. But it's so beautiful when you think like that. So literally I've always been that kind of optimistic person or whatever. Like I'm always looking for, are we looking at that the right way? Like I, my mind always goes like when a challenge arises, I'm like, okay, but we don't know all the facts. Let's not go there. Let's not go quick to a negative. And usually I would be right. Or do you ever have that situation where depending on your personality, like you get along really well with people and other people say, oh, that guy's a total jerk. You're like, really? I haven't experienced that. So much of life is you get in return of who you are and how you show up. Oh, definitely. And I think it's also tying up a few things now together, talking about as we've gotten older and we see things differently and in the second half of our lives, I realized I wasted a lot of time trying to please people and just figure out like, what do you want me to be? Who do you want me to be? And I've always been someone who has a lot of energy, who uh, has big ideas, vision. You and I are cut from the same cloth, probably separated at birth somewhere. And sometimes I was too much for some people. So then you try to downplay it and you try to be what you think is expected and fit into some box, only to realize I can't be effective when I'm trying to do or be anything other than me. And so I think that it's important to understand what power is, the power in authenticity, the power in accepting who you are, knowing what your strengths are, playing to those strengths. And you can't be everything to everyone because perception is reality. And all those different behavior styles do connect differently. So I feel like that is an important message that someone needed to hear. That's why I came up today. <laughs> yeah. You know what? And and I, if I could go back, but you hear often, if you could go back to your earlier version of yourself, what would you say? It's exactly that. It's stop caring about what everybody thinks. If everybody yeah. likes you, I'm an entertainer background, right? Grew up as a singer songwriter, that entertainer performance kind of personality. Mm -hmm. So I love applause and things like that. So I see so clearly now the people who love you are the, are your people, right? Yeah. They love you because of who you are, not because who you're being or who you're trying to be. And it is such a relief when you can just realize that's just another person with their own set of stuff. And how are you allowing somebody else to have such an influence over who you are? And that's just such a relief. So yeah, to anybody listening to this, like really just be your best self every day. Yeah. And do you and and, and allow some... yourself to be the definition of what that is exactly exactly yeah. and that's the whole reason why on my Facebook or anytime I have a tagline I have don't let the world change who you are let who you you are change the world because the world will want to dumb you down your brain will you you'll believe that sometimes right and it's, no I I don't want to change who I'm I, I really like myself and maybe yeah. those just aren't my people and you'll find your people. You'll find you know, I think when you stand in your truth and you're being your authentic self, you find your people faster. That's because you send out all these confusing signals. No one's really sure who the real you is. So once you get comfortable in your own skin and show people who you are, your people show up much faster because it's, oh, there you are. I feel it now. I feel the magnet. And listen, leadership, going back to that, leadership is influence. That is a core part of leadership. So it is about connecting and influencing people, but using your authentic power to do it because you want to connect authentically with other people on that level too. For instance, all right, I'm going to switch gears and ask you a question. Who are some people you admire? Who's influenced you and why are they important to you? Uh, that's great. Actually, I have two women that come right off the bat for me. One is a, was my acting coach when I was 17 years old. And I modeled, like I took a gap year because I was my local Miss America person. And I, I'd been a singer performer 
And the woman that ran the Miss Nevada pageant happened to be a modeling agent and she had her whole thing. And I was going to go to college there. And so I actually got into modeling, but I met this acting coach named Donna Hartley. And so she really taught me about speaking and confidence and all the things. She was this little redhead that, that was just an actress and just a dynamo. We lost touch when I got signed with LA Models and moved to LA because I was in the Tahoe area, Reno, Lake Tahoe area. And we lost touch for 20 some years, about 20 years, something like that. And then when I was at Keller Williams, one of my agents came up and they said, I want you to hear that. I heard this woman speak at a second home symposium. She was amazing. And I'm like, all I can see is dollar signs. I'm like, yeah, it's not in our budget. So I blew her off. So then she comes to me again. She said, oh, no, I'm, she's speaking in Reno. Come with me and listen. Well, this time I knew it was a, like I needed to slow down and read about this woman. So I read her bio, girl. Oh, it's, my it's God. Donna Hartley. It's my acting coach from when I was 17 years old. So I pick up the phone. I called Donna. I said, Donna, you're not going to believe that. Do you remember me? Melanie Owen. I'm now Melanie Teneman. And I am now in leadership. And I would love to reconnect. It turns out she had become a keynote speaker. She'd written books. And now her, she's change, uh, sharing her message all around the world to fire up your life and not give up on yourself, which is just beautiful. So she has been a real mentor for me for the last 17 years, honestly, very influential on anything's possible. My speaking, just taking risks, never giving up, like living life to the full. Playing to win. Playing to win. Exactly. My mantra. And then my mom has been a huge influence. My parents split when I was little and she was that person. She was a teacher. Then she got her master's in her fifties and became a principal, but she always worked at really high risk schools where she could make a difference. Mm -hmm. Implementing all day kindergartens. The kids would come in and she'd be like, come here, honey, did you have breakfast? I didn't think so. Here, I've got food for you. Or do you need a clean t-shirt? And she would just do lunch. Like I saw that in her. I saw the, the girls that were in trouble in my high school because she was a teacher in my high school. They're pregnant. They go to Miss Owen because she was just always there for people. She took a stand for people. Yeah. And so between those two, they really just impacted me greatly for sure. That's amazing. So before we run, run out of time, I want to talk uh, a little bit about your mantra, playing to win, why it's important to you, and give you an opportunity to share a little bit about your podcast, which I, I'll say I'm happy to be on if you'd like. And awesome. uh, yeah, we can talk more on your podcast, but tell us why playing to win is such a, a personal mantra for you. So in 2020, the world changed as we all know, right? The world yeah. changed. And I felt like there was so much playing not to lose, right? Playing mm -hmm. not to lose and playing to win. We've heard that from Gary. We've heard that from so many leaders. It's such a different energy because when you're playing not to lose, it's think about you're treading water and you're just holding your head above water so you don't drown. That's playing not to lose. Yeah, you're just being ultra safe. You're just safe and you're just barely surviving pretty much. And my that's how I vision it, right? Whereas when you play to win, you're like, oh, look, there's a buoy over there. Let's swim to the buoy and go sit on the buoy, right? Playing to win or on a basketball game, or a football game, whatever your sport is, can you win a game only playing defense? No. You got to shoot the ball. You got to run the ball. You got to do whatever you can to score some points. So playing to win, when you're playing to win, it's like playing offense. Like, I'm in control. I'm going to make a move. Whereas playing not to lose is like the defense, which you need to have that sometimes too, right, to keep you safe. So in 2020, end of 2020, I was like, okay, enough of this playing not to win. We're playing to win. We're playing to win in life. That's when my whole journey of like seven yeah. years marriage started. Like I live this. I wear a little thing. It's on my on my wall behind me, as you can see. It became playing to win awards at my office. Like everything came to be playing to win. So I started doing these live interviews with people and I called them playing to win. And then six months later, a, a, a dear friend of mine in San Francisco, Chad Peavy, who was one of my guests and he's a marketing guru. I love that guy. He's like, why don't you turn that into a podcast? And actually playing to win, like that's used a lot. So I was like, that's, if I use that, it's just going to be one of a thousand. So then I thought, what about the second half with Melanie Kenneman? And the second half has multiple meanings. Number one, it's the second half of this interview. Like it's the second use of it. So it's another platform for it. But honestly, you win or lose the game in the second half. Ah, I love that. It, 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 the first half matters. The second half matters more. So how many like, Super Bowls have you watched or whatever, like final, final game, championship game. And one team's 30 points ahead and the other guy comes back and beats them. Yep. 
that's because the second half matters. Of that, because it's also a, a message, you're right? It's never too late, right? You can still, the fourth quarter is coming on as fast and there's still plenty of time to make great things happen this year. Yeah, exactly. So imagine you put your pedal down right now and you make that decision right now to go all in quarter four. Absolutely. It's going to impact quarter four, but what's it going to do to quarter one of the next year? Amazing. Right? So it's never too late to make that decision to play to win. And you'll have days where you're like, you know what? Today, I just played not to lose all day. Fires, putting out fires. I had to do it. But guess yeah. what? Tomorrow's a new day and I get to make that decision to play to win. Yeah. And I, and love, you know, that. I love everything. Right about now. that too. It's a choice, a decision, right? We're just always one decision away from the next great thing happening. That's right. And you get so a chance. We, we could talk for hours. I'm probably going to have you back on for other topics, more specific topics, but I just um, know that people fell in love with you as I fall, fell in love with you years ago. You definitely are someone who's influenced me. And if anyone listening wants more Melanie, how can they find you? They could download the second half podcast with Melanie Kenneman on any of your Spotify or Apple. All my social is at Nani Owen Kenneman. I'm pretty much full everywhere. Go ahead and request and, or you could shoot me an email, melaniek at kw.com if you want more information about speaking or having me come speak or whatever. Yeah. Awesome. So Mel, is for having me, Miss Birthday Girl. So welcome, thanks for being my present today. So as we wrap up, I have one last question. Okay. What is a question I didn't ask that you wish I had? I think maybe a, a great question to end on would be, what am I most excited about? Okay, let's go for it. What are you most excited about? I feel like I have my life back in a way that I haven't felt for a very long time. So I'm excited for just the possibility. And I'm excited that I don't know it, everything, right? Like what's coming. And I'm excited that I wake up every day and I 100% believe that I get to choose how I spend this day. Mm. And so it's the freedom of the life that I'm living right now. I'm just excited for the possibilities and I'm excited to take people with me. And I see so many great people in the world doing great things. And I'm just, I'm just excited because I know that, like I said, this is my right now. It's just leading me to that next thing. And because I'm free and open for it, it's just excited. I haven't been this excited for a long time. That is a great place to end. And I thank you for being here. Love you. And I thank all of you for listening. We'll see you next time. Happy birthday. Thank you.